What's up and welcome. Every single year there are hundreds of thousands of games that come out. Okay, maybe not that many, but still there's a lot of games that come out each and every year. With so many games that come out, it is understandable that there are some that would slip under the radar. For the most part, a lot of people would think that the good games get the most attention and get sniffed out from the crowd, but that's not entirely true. So in this video, I thought I'd look at three lesser known games that are actually very good. Yellow Taxi Goes Vroom is a real name of a video game and it asks a very important question. What if Mario was a taxi? Yellow Taxi Goes Vroom is a platformer that takes a lot of inspiration from the Mario games and it did a pretty good job at doing so. The movement is probably the biggest difference this game has from the Mario games. As you can guess, you play as a yellow taxi, meaning you have an accelerate and a reverse button. The movement feels very good and pretty responsive. The character can stop on a dime and is easy to control while in the air or while jumping. All factors that are very important for a platformer. However, when turning the taxi is a little slippery. It's not that big of a deal but I did fall off platforms in the beginning so it was something I had to get used to. The action button is the only other button you have in this game besides the reverse and accelerate button. When when pressing the action button, the taxi will do a little spin and then dash forward. When you double tap the action button, the taxi will do a jump. You can perform a second dash or jump while in the air as well. The controls are very minimalist in this game and I don't hate it. The reason the minimalist choice works so well is down to the levels. Now the levels in this game are damn fun. Each level has a bunch of gears you have to collect. Collecting these gears will allow you to unlock new levels. Yes, it's just like Mario. Now the platforming feels great, even though the taxi controls are a little different from other characters in 3D platformers. The game also constantly changes things up. You have your regular levels that just focuses on the platforming. But you also have these levels where you have a timer. In these you have to collect items that gives you bonus time, as well as complete little side quests where you have to be an actual taxi and transport NPCs to their local locations. There are also sections where the game just turns into Pac-Man for a bit and there are also sections where you have to put toppings on pizza. And changing the game up like this just makes the levels feel a little bit cooler and more varied. The levels also contain some enemies, some of which are just there to be little dickheads, like the little green cars that will do their best to constantly bump into you. However, there are also some enemies like the bomb enemies that will run towards the player and blow up but you can knock these enemies away by doing your spin dash attack and there are some boss fights in this game as well and they are very reminiscent of the boss fights in super mario odyssey i do have to mention the soundtrack as well which i really enjoyed there are some groovy tunes in this game that perfectly fits with the levels it is playing in i think the levels overall are the greatest part of this game they are very well made and very fun to complete. If you are looking for a fun platformer or looking for a Super Mario type game on PC, well Yellow Taxi Goes Vroom is the game for you. I had a blast with this game and I highly recommend it to the platform lovers out there. RoboQuest is certainly not the most unknown game on this list, but I am still sure there is a whole lot of people that haven't heard of this game, which is why I decided to include it in this video. Now what exactly is RoboQuest? Well, RoboQuest is a game where you play as a robot on a quest to kick some robot ass. Now RoboQuest is a roguelike and a pretty decent one at that, so let's get into the things I like about this game. From the very beginning of the game, the most noticeable thing for me was just how good the movement is. 
The animations look silky smooth and the movement is fast paced and very responsive. Of course, having great movement in a first person shooter can contribute to helping the combat feel great, and in RoboQuest's case it most certainly does. But there are other elements in the game that have a bigger contribution to the overall awesomeness of this game's combat. The guns are probably the coolest element of this game. I think it's fair to say that the guns are all satisfying to use, even if some might be a little more useless or just kind of weak in my opinion. However, the greatest factor regarding the guns is just how many there are in this game. There are a wide variety of different types of guns, as well as different rarities. Some of these guns have some cool gimmicks, like the guns that shoot sticky bombs or the guns that have bouncing bullets, and it helps these guns feel unique from one another, and it is most likely that some of these gimmicks will appeal to different players with different preferences. For the most part, the guns feel pretty balanced as well. I say for the most part because there were some guns that felt very overpowered. The flame thrower is a perfect example of such a weapon. Other factors relating to the guns are the facts that the game allows you to carry two at a time and there are a bunch of elemental damage types that weapons can spawn with. The levels or rather the arenas are pretty well designed. There is enough open space in these levels to freely move around while also having barriers of sorts to hide behind while reloading. And there's also a bit of platforming in each of these arenas. To me, the key factor that says those arenas are well designed is down to how freely you can move within them. What do I mean by that exactly? Well, some arena shooters needlessly throw shit into their levels that can restrict the player's movement as they can easily get stuck or blocked by these obstacles. And well, that is simply not the case in RoboQuest. You can find these purple rooms as well that contain special chests. These purple rooms contain a little platforming puzzle and they get progressively harder over the course of the game. However, it is worth finding these rooms as the special chest contains much more valuable items than the regular chests you can get at the checkpoints. Now of course you do need some enemies to fight within these levels and RoboQuest does not disappoint in this department. The enemy variety is absolutely brilliant in this game. You have a wide variety of different enemies ranging from stationary enemies to flying enemies to your regular grounded enemies. Over the course of the game the enemies moves and abilities become more complex and more difficult. The enemies are also very well designed and will constantly seek out and keep pressure on the player. This is important given how there are quite a bit of hiding spaces in these levels, like how I mentioned before, and the enemies ensure that the player is constantly moving and not just camping in these areas. Another way the game encourages the player to stay aggressive is by making enemies drop health, but it will disappear after a while. Each arena has a little robot that will cross the arena on a rail that extends from side to side. Killing this robot will give the player some extra health and might drop some other useful items as well. The enemies themselves can drop weapons but will mostly drop wrenches that can be used to buy permanent upgrades. When it comes to upgrades there are two types. Given that this is a roguelike you have upgrades that you will get while traversing the levels and they are not permanent. And then there are of course the upgrades that will permanently help the player and will not be lost once you have died. There are a lot of non-permanent upgrades and each class has their own types. The permanent upgrades however do not differ from class to class and will carry over even if you unlock a new class. The different classes also have their own special abilities and melee attacks and I thought that was a pretty neat touch. I do also like how some enemies have some abilities that completely change up the game's mechanics. For example, getting hacked or stunned. When you get hacked, your controls will invert and when you get stunned, you have a sort of mini game that will task you to press some buttons to recover. I think it is a pretty unique way to change the game up and make it more interesting. Finally, the game is visually pretty good looking. This is probably the least important aspect of this game, but I think it is still worth mentioning as it looks very good. RoboQuest is awesome. Sure, there are definitely better roguelikes out there, but I am surprised there aren't that many people talking about this game. As someone who is not the biggest fan of roguelikes, I really enjoy this game, and I would most certainly recommend it to the people who love roguelikes or people just looking for a good fast-paced first-person shooter.
Mullet Magic is a rogue light with an 80s anime theme where you are chosen for a game show, live stream or something and your goal is to save the princess. Now this game is a rogue light. In other words, it has some mechanics of a rogue like but to a lesser extent. In this game you have levels and chapters and levels are very short. For me, they were between 30 seconds to a minute long. After completing 9 levels, the 10th level will be a boss fight. Once you defeat the boss, you will complete a chapter. Now, once you die, you will not start from the very beginning, but you will start from the beginning of the chapter you are busy with. Hence why it is a roguelite. Similar to roguelikes, you will get permanent and temporary upgrades. Each level you complete will give you an upgrade. These will range from items boosting stats to actual weapons. Some of these items I found to be quite terrible. I wouldn't go as far as to call them entirely useless, but they are not that great. An example of such an upgrade item is the minus 10% to the next boss fight. The reason why is down to the fact that the boss fights don't have that big of a health bar to begin with and then there is the fact that some upgrades are pretty good and actually enhance a lot of the player's base stats which will more than make up for the extra 10% health. Also there are some crazy upgrade items as well like the item that gives you a chance of dual wielding weapons if you drink a soda. And well this skill will absolutely demolish level and boss fights, especially if you have the right weapon. Speaking of weapons, there are a bunch of weapons that you can get. My least favorite was the katana. The reason why is down to the fact that it just doesn't have any range, and that is kind of an important factor in this game. You see, the way your health works in this game is worth time. You have 10 seconds that will constantly run down. Killing enemies gives you extra time, however getting shot or hit by enemies or other environmental hazards will reduce some time. When you are running at enemies with a katana, it gives more than enough opportunity for the enemies to hit you, especially in rooms with multiple enemies in them. For this reason, I don't like the katana. On the other hand, my favorite weapon was the shotgun, as it has a perfect range and widespread of bullets, which is perfect for clearing out rooms of enemies, especially the upgraded shotgun. That brings me to the permanent upgrades. These upgrades can only be chosen after you have completed a chapter and for the most part I think these permanent upgrades are perfectly fine. Moving on to the gameplay, like I mentioned this is a fast paced first person shooter. The shooting feels satisfying and very fun. There are also a bunch of environmental obstacles that the enemies can be kicked into for some cool environmental kills and this gives the player a bit of variety when it comes to ways of taking down enemies. Some enemies will drop melee weapons that can be used to perform finishing which is similar to the glory kills in Doom. These are pretty useful as they will give the player some bonus time. I only wish there were a bit more finisher animations. The enemies are decent as well, however the enemy variety is not that great. Each chapter you complete will give you one new enemy type. I do not think the enemy variety is that bad, but it definitely could be a little bit better. The levels are focused on running and gunning, but there are some platforming and wall running as well, as well as some environmental hazards like electricity and acid pools. There are some shortcuts in which you can slide through vents that will save some time. Another factor I liked about the levels is just how much detail there is within them. Even though you will be traveling through these levels at the speed of light and wouldn't really get an opportunity to take it all in, I still appreciate the fact that the devs went through all the work to put in so much detail in the levels to make them look cool. The cutscenes look pretty cool as well and are very well made. There aren't that many voice acted scenes in this game, but the voice acting is well done. One small complaint I have is that there is a lot of repeating dialogue, especially with your stream moderator chick. Not sure what her name is. Anyway, each boss fight room has the same dialogue that will repeat and the level itself plays out in the exact same way. But other than that, I have no real complaints. Mullet Magic is pretty awesome. As someone who is not a fan of anime, I will admit I still like the theme of this game. The gameplay is very fun and well made and overall this game is just pretty darn good. So anybody looking for a fast paced boomer shooter, this one is for you.
with AAA studios getting more greedy and greedy by the year, it is understandable why so many people turn to indie titles. But like I mentioned before, it is very easy for games like this to just go under people's radars and get absolutely no recognition at all. I think the three games I played in this video are perfect examples of games that just don't get the recognition they deserve. So in conclusion, if you are looking for some relatively unknown games, games that many people haven't played and are pretty good, well the three I played in this video might just be exactly what you are looking for. That is it for this video, I thank you very much for watching, bye bye.